how do we age? There's so many theories of aging. There's no one answer. There are many, many factors that contribute to aging, so we cannot just rely on one single cause. And as we age, there are so many, many things that happen. I mentioned to you the degenerative diseases, including heart disease, stroke, arthritis, diabetes. Once you reach 70, 80, you can take your pick. <laughs> you want arthritis? You want diabetes? <laughs> uh, some of you are greedy, you, you have two or three or four. <laughs> and even cancers. These are just some of the theories about aging. There are probably 200 of those. So all of them are probably correct in the sense that they all contribute to the process of aging. And if you agree with me that, that even cancer is a, some, is a form of aging, they also contribute to cancer. But I just want to stress today on the oxidative stress of pre radical theory, since the subject matter of the product as earlier on explained by Ms. Annie is that it has a very high antioxidant power, which is the answer to free radicals. Now, just to remind you about the problem with cancer, the lifetime risk for cancer here in Malaysia is 1 in 4. In the year 2020, it's expected to be 1 in 3. It's already one in three in US and UK, example. And in some cities, political cities in the world, it's already one in two and expected to be one in one by the year 2020. What does one in one mean? Everyone. You will get it. <laughs> yeah, right? You will get it. It's just a matter of time. If you live long enough, if you live long enough and you'll die earlier because of, in Malaysia, it's car accidents. Uh, dengue, <laughs> all right, or snatch leaves nowadays. <laughs> then you wait for cancer. It is the second highest cause of death in most developed countries, already number one killer in the most developed, like UK and USA, and will be highest in most countries by 2020. And there's a uh, alarming increase in lung, breast, colon, prostate cancers. Let's look at breast cancer though. In USA, over the last 30 years, it has increased from 1 in 20 to 1 in 7, probably close to 1 in 6 now. That means a three-fold increase in 30 years. And guess what? We Malaysians are copying the statistics. All right? There's also, also a rapid rise in lung cancer in women smokers. Not surprising because women now uh, also want to prove to men that women also or, <laughs> and the message again is that now we understand that a lot of this is due to free radical damage to the DNA. It's responsible for many cancers. While there are there are genetic reasons, there are effective reasons, but if the DNA is preserved from free radical damage in the first place they will be less susceptible to further damage, right? It is very important because this is about having many factors. If you take care of your critical damage, then the damage by others will not cause it to become cancerous as quickly as if you already have critical damage and something else comes and will damage it further. So, okay. One in four is our risk, but it's in brackets, because unfortunately our statistics are not that accurate, because many people are still not coming to the hospitals here in Malaysia, because they say if you go to the hospitals, that means you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. So when if, so many of them, when they have cancers also, they go to bones and traditional healers and others, and when they're terminal, they go to hospital, and they die. Of course, what they say becomes correct. <laughs> go to the hospital, you die because they wait until they're about to die before they go to the hospital. So in brackets, because that's what we estimate is the actual risk, if we include the estimated 25% that do not report themselves to the hospitals. And you can see, if you break into the, the races, the risks are different. Chinese, one in four recorded, one in three is probably the actual risk. 
So the Chinese are already like the U.S. and the advanced countries. The Indians, one in five, actual, uh, actual one in four, and Malays, one in seven, actual one in five. So there are differences between the races uh, reflecting our genetic differences and probably our dietary and lifestyle differences also. And there's also a preponderance of certain diseases uh, in, in the different races. 82% of the cancer cases here in Malaysia are in those above 40, and we have about, about 40,000 new cases yearly with about 5,000 deaths. And that's very small compared to what's happening in USA. We're talking about 100,000 a year, right? Of course, their population is also 10 times bigger than ours. These are the type of cancers that Malaysians get, men and women. If you combine the two, the number one is lung. All right? But lung cancer is the most preventable cancer. If you stop smoking, 90% of lung cancers will not happen. Right? 90% of lung cancers are due to smoking. It's not really 90% of smokers get lung cancer. 90% of, of uh, cancers is related to smoking. Only 10% are in those who don't smoke. Uh, but nowadays, there's a lot of, lot of uh, suspicion also is because of the secondhand smoke, which may be worse because when you smoke, your smoke is filtered. When you blow at another person, that person gets a pure, unfiltered smoke. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot of blame on secondhand smoke in that 10% of non-smokers who get cancer. The second, if you combine both men and women, number one is lung, number two is colorectal, that means colon plus rectal. For women alone, it's breast, all right, breast, breast is way ahead. Now, cervical cancer, it's a pity because modern uh, scientific technology um, has come up with the pap smear for many, many years, of decades now, Pap smears do not prevent cervical cancer, but detect, can detect the changes even before they become cancer. Right? So you can treat uh, in the precancerous stage and prevent cancer, cancer that way. Right? It's just a test. It's not preventive, but by, by testing early, you can prevent cancer by treating early. Unfortunately, our women are not going for regular pap smears like they should. For men, as our life expectancy increases, prostate cancer will slowly rise up. All right? It's totally related to age. For example, I am 54. Therefore, statistically, I have a 54% chance that there's already prostate cancer cells now in my prostate. Well, of course, I think Marky Berry from now on. <laughs> which means if you live this day, you are 70, you have 70% chance. All right, of it already starting inside there. When we say that cancer cell does not mean that if we do tests, it can be detected. Even if you do screening tests, there must be a few millions of cells before they are detectable. If you go for scanning and others, you need by that time probably billions of cells to even form a lung. Let's just focus on our women. Most common breast cancer, the risk is 1 in 19, but the Chinese alone, 1 in 14. Okay, remember I told you in USA, 30 years ago it was 1 in 20.